Hi everyone, Janie here, and by now you all probably know that I love upcycling. I am the trash to treasure lady, and today I'm going to be talking to you about upcycling prescription bottles. And don't stop now and think, oh, I got to leave this video because I don't have those. Well, even if you don't have prescriptions, I bet you know someone that does, and they probably just throw those bottles in the trash. So why not ask them to save them for you and then you can upcycle them. So I've had this video in the plans for about two years now. And I guess I procrastinate, but not really. I just have a lot of other projects that come up that seem to take priority. And so recently somebody posted in a Facebook group wanting to know, what do you do with these prescription bottles? And I thought, you know what? It is time for me to make this video. So let's head on over to my craft table and let me give you a few ideas on what to do with them. As we go along, I'll give you a couple of ideas on what you can use these bottles for. But we're going to start with the basics right now. And the first thing is going to be how to get the label off. Because most likely it will come with a label off unless you get it from someone else and they already have removed it. So it's just as simple as getting a corner here and peeling. They usually peel off clean. If they don't, you may have to, like right there it didn't, you may have to use um, a cleaner to get it off. And I'll put a link below to a cleaner. So here we go. Usually mine peel off perfectly clean. And this one, well, wait a minute. We're backing up and it is perfectly clean. There we go. So that is how mine usually come off and there's no need to, to scrub any adhesive off or anything. So there's step one. Step two, you might want to wash them, especially the inside in case there was any residue um, from whatever medication was in there or if there's any um, marks on the outside. So mine never have any residue, but yours might. And step three, is covering the outside of the bottle. And I have painted all of these and I wanna to talk to you about the different paints, but you could also um, adhere paper to the outside. You know, just cut it to the right size, measure your bottle, the height and the distance around and adhere paper. But you wouldn't be able to do that to this top part. So no matter what, you will probably end up doing some painting. So let's talk about paint options. I would have to say that my favorite paint option is spray paint, which was done to these two, only because it gives it a nice smooth coverage, no streak lines. Um, it gets into all the little nooks and crannies and it's really quick and easy, but you're gonna have to do it outside or in your garage, a well ventilated area, um, an area that you don't worry about spray paint getting all over. Um, most of the time people buy spray paint in the big cans, but you can get it in little cans like this if you don't want to invest in a larger can. So that's probably not the problem, but most likely you're not gonna want to go out in your garage or outside depending on the weather too much. So, but that still is my favorite way. My second favorite way, and the way that I find actually the easiest, is using, <laughs> believe it or not, house paint, the same paint you would use to paint your walls in your house. And you're going, well, I'm not gonna go buy a big gallon of paint to do this. You don't have to. They sell little samples. Valspar is my favorite. I think I got this at either Lowe's or Home Depot for probably about three and a half dollars. And I have used it on so many projects and there is tons in here. It's like, I will we'll never run out of this. Eh, someday, maybe. But anyways, you can also get um, a different size sample from places like um, Ace Hardware. They sell it in a, in a can. And I think theirs is like $5. So for $3.50 to $5, you can pick up samples and they'll last a long time. You can use them on other projects besides these. And they do, even when you paint them on, still go on pretty smooth. Not quite as smooth as the spray, but still very smooth and easy to use. And I actually, I only put one coat on these and I probably should put two coats. These have two coats on them. And only because 
you know, you can see through here and I could see light in a couple of little tiny streak areas. So I just wanted to have extra good coverage. Now we're going to get to these. These were done with acrylic paints and this one has about three coats and it's not a gloss. Um, I'm going to be using it to do some napkin crafting on. They'll have Mod Podge on it, so it's okay that it's not a gloss. But um, let's see if I can get it up there. You can definitely see streaks. It is not smooth. There's definitely brush streaks on this. And it is hard to get it into the nooks and crannies. On this one, I decided to try something different, so I put gesso on first. Still ended up putting on two coats of white. And then I ended up probably putting on two coats of the um, this pearl. This really took a lot. So this takes less coats, this takes less coats, this takes more coats for using these little bottles of acrylic paints. But the options are yours. And the same thing on the inside, it's also an option. It depends on, on what the inside looked like after you paint the outside. You can put paper on the inside, you can paint the inside. So you have a lot of choices. You just have to be really careful when painting because it depends on, let me grab a lid here. It depends on if you're gonna put your lid on this way and then you know have something decorative in here, which we'll be talking about later, then it's okay that you've painted right here. But be sure if you're gonna be doing any painting on the lid that you do not paint right in here because it will come off over time and the same thing you know this will screw on and it screws on just fine I just worry about how many times it's going to go on and off and you know it'll wear the paint off so those are just a couple of things to keep in mind when you're painting but there we go we've got the bottles all prepared and ready to start decorating I'm going to start off with this pink one and I have measured around, it was five inches around, and I have cut me some lace, lace trim here. And so it will fit perfectly around the bottle. Now, as you can see, it only covers half the bottle. So I've cut a second piece that I'm going to layer on the bottom. And the way I'm gonna put that on there is with some spray adhesive. And this is the one that I like to use. And I don't spray the bottle. What I do is I spray the back of the lace and that way it's not all over the bottle, um, you know, so you touch it and it's all sticky. So I'm going to go do this and because it is a time sensitive matter once I spray it and get it on there, I will be doing this off camera. But just know that I'm just going to go spray and then wrap it on there. So I'll be right back. So here it is covered in lace and you can see right here where I overlapped. So I might have cut it a little bit smaller, but it's better to have it overlap than have it not meet. And I made sure I did it right here where this is at because we're gonna be hanging something from there anyway. And so it will end up taking away from this. It'll, you know, cover it up and not make it so obvious. Or you can put a piece of ribbon or pearls or anything you want down there. But this is what I've got so far. I also wanted to show you at this really pretty paper. Um, if you want to put it on the inside, but not up where the um, top is going to screw in, so just up below that. This piece of paper is four and three fourths by three and one eighth. And what you would do, and I'm not going to do it right now, but if you wanted something pretty on the inside, you're gonna roll it with the design on the inside, like that. And you are gonna put adhesive in here, whether you paint in some Mod Podge or whatever you wanna do. And then you're gonna pop it down inside and push it into place. And you will have a beautiful inside. Well, I thought about it so, and I decided I do wanna put a piece of ribbon right down that side. And to do that, you can use something like Beacon 3-in-1 or Beacon Fabri-Tac. And Fabri-Tac is what I'm going to use and my bottle is really low here so it may take a minute for me to get some to come out. Um, but the reason why I chose to go with Fabri-Tac is because it's not just fabric onto something but 
you know, it's a piece of ribbon onto a piece of lace. So it is fabric on fabric. Let me make sure I got it all the way down there. Okay. I'll just take my ribbon and tuck it right up there. And I cut it bigger than I needed because I can always trim that off and I didn't want it to be smaller than I needed. My problem is I need to get it right where I want it. There we go. Okay. So I have a pretty piece of ribbon going down the side. And the next thing I'm going to do is put some ribbon right here through this little opening and tie that and it'll kind of all blend in together because it'll be the same ribbon. Okay, now comes the fun part. I've added some pearls around here. I've got a bow and some ribbons there, but there is so much more to do. And I'm just going to show you options. So you can have a little applique and, and add that to it or a bigger one. So we've got pretty butterflies. There's so many things you can do to this or just leave it the way it is. Now for the cap. I actually had something specifically for this and it seems to have disappeared off the face of the planet. No problem. Let me show you some options. You can take a flower and adhere that in there. Um, here's another one. This is kind of a little ceramic one that you could adhere in the cap or, oh, I don't know here. How about, well, wrong color because it's white unless you want it white, but a little shabby chic flower and just all kinds of options. In fact, you're going to laugh at this one, but um, one of these little lights sit in there. So, you know, if you wanted to use it to hold a little night light, you can do that. Or, wait a minute, what could possibly be in here? <gasps> Q-tips! Yeah, Q-tips. This is a perfect little Q-tip holder. You dress it all up nice and you can sit it on your vanity, um, by your sink, on your nightstand, or you can use it for travel. But it is a perfect holder for Q-tips, even with the top on this direction. So they fit in there perfectly. And now we're going to discuss this. If this is on the inside, all you have to do is cut out a piece of pretty paper and a circle and adhere it right on and it will cover that up and it will just be beautiful. As for the outside, you could also put pearls around the edge here or paint it or leave it the way that it is. Basically, I'm just here today to give you some ideas. So this isn't like a project tutorial process thing. This is, let me give my viewers some ideas of what they can do with these bottles. And this is just one, so I am going to show you more. But, you know, like for example, right there I've got bows. Well, what if you'd rather hang a tassel from it? That would look so cute having a tassel hanging from that. So, so many options and, let me grab one over here. Okay, this one's not done. But let's say you wanted the cap to go on this direction, okay? It is still a great place to put things, you know, or just put a decorative paper over the top of it, whatever you would like to do. My favorite way actually though is this direction. That is my favorite way to use them. So that's one idea. Keep watching because I'll give you another idea of what to use this for. Anyone here into napkin crafting? This is the one that I did with acrylic paint. This is a piece of napkin and Mod Podge. Got a water brush and a sponge brush. And I'm just gonna speed this process up for you. If you are not into napkin crafting, you can just fast forward a little bit.
after a couple coats of Mod Podge, I actually added another coat of Gloss Mod Podge. And let's see, I've added a ribbon and bow. I took the lid and I painted it with red um, acrylic paint. And then I went over it with Pearl Mod Podge. I bet you guys didn't know there were so many different Mod Podges, right? And added some pearls and added a little shabby chic flower up here at the top. And not bad. We could probably use a little bit more, but like I said, this isn't a tutorial or a process to a gorgeous finished project. It is just to inspire you and let you see some of the possibilities. And this is one. And I said as we go along, I'll tell you um, other things that you can put in them. And so you've already seen Q-tips. So I don't have anything in here yet, but hold on a second. How about paper clips? You can have this filled with paper clips on your desk. So there's another idea. Let's see what other ideas I come up with. Now here's one you didn't get to see me do. And it's also not complete because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might hang a key off this side. I might find something really cool to put on the top, something masculine and, and metal to go on the top. But what I did here was I covered it in Mod Podge and wrapped it in twine. And let me grab some different twines here. Let's see. Huh. I had another one, but I think it disappeared off the face of the planet. But you can get a variety of twines and use whatever kind you want. Um, this is the one I used right here. And so the Mod Podge adheres it to the bottle. And then I have these little studs and I put those around there because this is a masculine one. And the top I painted, so as you can see, you no longer can see the writing on it. I ended up putting on two coats. It really only needed one, but I like to do two just to be safe. So again, this was one of the Valspar um, paint samples that I had picked up. And then I did something a little bit different on this. On the inside, I can't put anything around here because that's where it screws on. But in the cap and in the bottle, I have felt. And the reason I have felt is because I'm going to be giving this one to my husband when I'm done and he wears hearing aids and he's a truck driver so when he's traveling and he goes to bed he has to take them out and I want him to have a safe place to put them and so the felt will protect them as will this and yet it looks really nice. So that's another idea. Of course not everybody knows someone with hearing aids so you know, what about if this was one of the fancier ones and you could put your jewelry in it, um, you know, when you're traveling to keep it safe? Or even, you know, having it on your dresser to put some jewelry in. It'd be kind of a cute idea. But definitely, this works for a guy, so if it's not for hearing aids, this could be for paper clips or something on the desk. Oh, wait. Another idea. I put something in here. Toothpicks. How about a toothpick holder? It doesn't have to be a masculine one. It could be something like this to sit on your table or at a picnic or to keep in your camper for toothpicks. So that is just one more idea. So I've talked to you about a variety of paints that you can use to cover them. I have shown you a variety of materials that you can use to cover them. I mentioned paper, which I haven't shown you, but there's also faux leather. And this is from Cricut, and Cricut has a variety of faux leathers and other types of materials that would be beautiful on the outside of these. Um, other things that you can decorate these with could be stickers, or you know what, if you are a good artist, you can paint designs on here. You can paint flowers. You can, you know, paint pretty things. There is just so many possibilities. And of course, we only mentioned a few things that you can put in them, such as Q-tips and paper clips and toothpicks and hearing aids and jewelry. And 
I've even thought of other things like my kids play games that involve dice and the dice can go in there. I'm sure you're going to think of all kinds of things that can go in these and all kinds of ways to decorate them. But this was just to give you some ideas and some inspiration on upcycling medicine bottles. Thank you all for watching today. And I hope this gave you a few ideas and I bet you have come up with a few of your own. And so I hope that you start upcycling everything, not just prescription bottles, but everything. And if you need some ideas, I will provide some links below in the description box or you can click right here. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye bye.